Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Justin P. Coffey. I'm the Aaron Pembleton Chair in History at Quincy University. And today I will be speaking about Dwight David Eisenhower's legacy. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower was born in Texas uh, in 1890. He was raised in Kansas. And as a young man, he was accepted into West Point, where he would spend the rest of his adult life until he became president as a member of the United States Army. Uh, although he did not serve uh, in combat in World War I, um, he, he learned a great deal from his experiences on the home front. Later on, during the 1930s, he will serve under General Douglas MacArthur uh, in the Philippines. Then during World War II, he will be sent to England, where he will eventually be appointed Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces and he most famously oversaw the operations of Operation Overlord D-Day, June 6, 1944. By the end of the war, he was about the most popular person in the world. After the war, he came home, he stayed in the United States Army, and he will be appointed the commander of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Now, Dwight Eisenhower had been a soldier all his life. Uh, he had mo almost entirely stayed out of politics. But in 1952, he is asked to run for president, and he announces that he is a Republican, and he runs in the primaries, wins the nomination, and in the 1952 election, he runs against Illinois Governor Adlai Stevenson, where he, Eisenhower wins an overwhelming mandate. Now, as president, Eisenhower serves two terms. When he left office in 1961, most historians did not give him very high grades. But that assessment of Eisenhower has changed dramatically over the decades. And the eight years that he served in office they are looked back as being a time of peace, prosperity, stability. And Eisenhower is given a great deal of credit for many of the things that are, he accomplished during those eight years. One of the most important things was that he successfully entered the war in Korea that had begun in 1950. He ensured that North Korea and South Korea signed an armistice, an armistice that still holds nearly 70 years later. In Vietnam, he did not get involved militarily, and the historians give him credit for that. He insisted on a balanced budget, and in the six of eight years he was president, uh, there was a balanced budget. Inflation was very low, unemployment was low, the economy grew. These were very good economic times. And Eisenhower, when he left office, his approval ratings over eight years, average 67 uh, percent. He was reelected uh, in a landslide in 1956. He proved to be very popular. Uh, he was a moderate. Um, he eschewed both uh, the far right and the far left. And uh, during his eight years, he was able to work with Democrats in Congress and other Republicans and uh, was bipartisan. Again, when he left office in 1961, many dismissed him as a do-nothing president who played golf and took naps and really wasn't in charge of his administration, and that for eight years, nothing really happened. But the verdict of history has changed significantly to the point now where, according to the latest ranking from the C-SPAN poll of historians released in 2021, Dwight Eisenhower is ranked the country's fifth greatest president. Again, his economic record, historians give him credit for. Also, his civil rights record. that uh, He did a great deal to advance the cause of civil rights. Um, for example, he signed the 1957 Civil Rights Act into law. Uh, that same year, he stared down the governor of, of Arkansas, Orville Faldis, who refused to integrate Little Rock Central High School and tried to defy the Supreme Court. Eisenhower did a number of other things like 
ensuring that Washington, D.C. no longer had segregation, ensuring that the military was fully integrated. So his civil rights record is very strong. Um, there were almost no scandals during his presidency. He was, again, historians give him credit for being a very honest man. So in the eight years that he was president from 1953 to 1961, we're a time looking back when America was strong, united, prosperous. And Eisenhower did more than just preside over those years. He was actively involved in many of the things that led to it being such a good time in American history. And American, and, and, and again, the, the verdict of his legacy now is that he was not just a great military leader, but a great president. Um, obviously, overseeing D-Day and Operation Overlord cemented his legacy as a military man, but now the verdict in, in, in terms of politics was that he was very successful. And so that has changed over the years and to the point where he is now ranked as the country's fifth greatest president by historians. And so that is Eisenhower's legacy, that of a good, honest man who was a great president. These are some of the other things you can look at very briefly. Uh, he instituted, uh, the, most importantly, uh, the Federal Aid Highway Act, the Eisenhower Interstate System, that, he, that is part of his legacy every time you drive in an interstate. Eisenhower ensured that we would have that system. So again, Eisenhower's record is looked upon as being one of almost unparalleled success in modern times that everything he did was already successful, lack of scandals, and uh, by the time he left office, America was safe, prosperous, and uh, he is given credit for that. I thank you very much for listening today. Um, I'm very honored to speak to uh, members of the Quincy University alumni, um, and uh, I thank you for having me.